In the end, it was Leibniz's calculus rather than Newton's calculus that came to dominate, that became the calculus, if you like. And on the whole, the notation that we use today, for instance, dy by dx and the integral sign, those are Leibniz's notation. Newton's notation didn't entirely disappear. Engineers, for instance, still use Newton's x dot, that's his notation for fluxions, and that still is in use, but it's much, much rarer and it's used in special circumstances. So on the whole, it was Leibniz's new calculus that, that won the day, if you like. And that was really to do with the much earlier publication of it and the fact that it was taken up by a group of people who then developed it in various ways. Uh, through challenge problems which led them to develop new techniques and um, yes, better methods to advance their methods. Uh, they communicated this with each other through public communications. They also to some extent taught each other. For instance, uh, L'Hopital took private lessons from Johann Bernoulli and then wrote a book, the first textbook on the calculus, based on those lessons. So there was a lot of material in the public domain. Whereas Newton's calculus, being much more secret and only given out to a few people at a time, a few chosen followers, was never taken up and developed in the same way. Um, if people had worked with it, it could have been developed as Leibniz's was, but it simply wasn't.